It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search it out is the glory of kings. This is the Message to Kings podcast. So 211, the book of Joel. So before we start the book of Joel, uh, there's different ways to pronounce Joel. Um, I'm going to go with the Americanized Joel. Um, there's other versions. Uh, you've even probably heard people say Joel. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go with Joel. Um, scholars have different opinions on when the book of Joel was written. Many opinions point to the book of Joel occurring during the current siege of Jerusalem. And we're just going to go with this, that um, it occurs right here, uh, right now. Um, little is known of the prophet Joel, um, and in the true time frame and origin, um, there are opinions out there, um, but we know the true power of his words and how he is quoted even into the New Testament age. I imagine him like a scribe in the court of Zedekiah, um, who wrote down his visions in a letter form and sent them out to the elders and the other prophets. Um, I kind of imagine him as a, a low-key, little initial physical verbal impact, yet very powerful for the reader. So maybe this was more of a written prophecy. Um, his style and words and visualization will last generations, considering how Daniel will run with his words later and how when he compiles the books of the Bible at his time. Uh, the Apostle Peter will actually quote him later as well. A good number of scholars point to the current time frame due to the nature of the prophecies and the context of the words. But the prophecies, like the words of the prophets, they span generations and even ages of men from the current podcast timeline to the time of the New Testament, even to the end of the age, even Armageddon. It's a short book and will cover pretty much the entirety of the book because of the amazing complexity and future significance to his prophecies. The visualization of the book packs a punch as it tries to paint the horrific time period ahead for Israel, the outpouring of the Spirit to follow, the end of the age conflict, and the peace that follows. All right, here we go. Joel 1, the word of the Lord that came to Joel, son of Pethiel. Hear this, you elders. Listen, all who live in the land. Has anything like this ever happened in your days or in the days of your ancestors? Tell it to your children, and let your children tell it to their children, and their children to the next generation. What the locust swarm has left, the great locust have eaten. What the great locust have left, the young locust have eaten. What the young locust have left, other locusts have eaten. Wake up, you drunkards, and weep. Wail, you drinkers of wine. Wail because of the new wine, for it has been snatched from your lips. And a nation has invaded my land, a mighty armor, army without number. It has teeth of a lion, the fangs of a lioness, and has laid waste my vines and ruined my fig trees. It has stripped off their bark and thrown it away, leaving their branches white. Mourn like a virgin in sackcloth, grieving for the betrothed of her youth. Grain offerings and drink offerings and cut off from the house of the Lord. The priests are in mourning and those who minister before the Lord. The fields are ruined. The ground is dried up. The grain is destroyed. The new wine is dried up. The olive oil fails. Despair, you farmers. Wail, you vine growers. Grieve for the wheat and the barley because the harvest of the field is destroyed. The vine is dried up and the fig tree is withered. The pomegranate, the palm, and the apple tree all the trees of the field are dried up. Surely the people's joy is withered away. Put on sackcloth, you priest, and mourn. Wail, you who minister before the altar. Come spend the night in sackcloth, you who minister before my God. The grain offerings and drink offerings are withheld from the house of the, your God. Declare a holy fast. Call a sacred assembly. Summon the elders and all who live in the land for the house of the Lord your God and cry out to the Lord. Alas for that day, for the day of the Lord is near. It will come like destruction from the Almighty. Has not the food been cut off before your very eyes? Joy and gladness from the house of our God. The storehouses are in ruins. The granaries have been broken down, for the grain is dried up. How the cattle moan, the herds mill about, because they have no pasture. Even the flocks of sheep are suffering. 
To you, Lord, I call. For fires devoured the pastures in the wilderness, and the flames have burned up all the trees of the field. Even the wild animals pant for you. The streams of water have dried up, and fire has devoured the pastures in the wilderness. So that's the visual. An army of locusts coming and destroying crops and produce and fields. And in this case, an army is coming that will destroy everything. The commandment is the age-old national command of declare a holy fast and pray, repent, and call upon God. It's Solomon's old decree. It's the promise of the ages that God would deliver. Joel 2. Deliverance comes now. And we see what happens after repentance mirroring a spiritual battle that occurs when we repent, but also an actual moment at the end of the age. So it starts with this army of locusts and then in Joel 1, then it says declare a holy fast, and it's like it gives you a picture of what could happen in Joel 2, or that has happened before when men do repent. And men and women, of course, repent. And and then, but it also speaks of this end of the age. And, and we're going in and out of different ages of man and God's above time and space. And I'll just leave it at that as we go into Joel 2. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy hill. Let all who live in the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming. It is close at hand, a day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and blackness. Like dawn spreading across the mountains, a large and mighty army comes, which has never was in ancient times, nor ever will be in ages to come. Before them fire devours, behind them a flame blazes. Before them the land is like the Garden of Eden, behind them a desert waste. Nothing escapes them. They have the appearance of horses. They gallop along like cavalry. With a noise like that of chariots, they leap over the mountaintops. Like crackling fire, consuming stubble, like an army drawn up for battle. And at the sight of them, nations are in anguish. Every face turns pale. They charge like warriors. They scale walls like soldiers. And they all march in line, not swerving from their course. They do not jostle each other. Each marches straight ahead. They plunge through the defenses without breaking ranks. They rush upon the city wall. They run along the wall. They climb into the houses like thieves. They enter through the windows. Before them the earth shakes, the heavens tremble, and the sun and moon are blackened, and the stars no longer shine. The Lord thunders at the head of his army. His forces are beyond number. The mighty is the army that obeys his command. The day of the Lord is great. It is dreadful. Who can endure it? So after we receive the visual of, or we receive that command to declare a holy fast, then we get that visual of that enormous army in the day of the Lord and the Lord coming, which could be also a, a picture of just God's deliverance upon any time when we do cl- declare a holy fast especially a national fast. And then it gets back into commandments. Now we're followed by this natural command to repent. And with an interesting statement of, and if you do, who knows? God may turn and relent from sending calamity and leave behind a blessing and pour out his spirit. Joel 2, 12. Even now declares the Lord, Return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your heart, not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger and abounding in love, and he relents from sending calamity. Who knows? He may turn and relent and leave behind a blessing, grain offerings and drink offerings for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, declare a holy fast, call a sacred assembly, Gather the people, consecrate the assembly, bring together the elders, gather the children, those nursing at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride in her chamber. Let the priest who ministers before the Lord weep between the portico and the altar. Let them say, spare your people, Lord. Do not make your inheritance an object of scorn, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the peoples, where is their God? Then the Lord was jealous for his land. 
and he took pity on his people. The Lord replied to them, I am sending you grain, new wine, and olive oil, enough to satisfy you fully. Never again will I make you an object of scorn to the nations. I will drive the northern horde far from you, pushing it into the parched and barren land. Its eastern ranks will drown in the Dead Sea, and its western ranks in the Mediterranean Sea, and its stench will go up, and its smell will rise. Surely he has done great things. Do not be afraid, land of Judah. Be glad and rejoice. Surely the Lord has done great things. Do not be afraid, you wild animals, for the pastures in the wilderness are becoming green. The trees are bearing their fruit. The fig tree and the vine yield their riches. Be glad, people of Zion. Rejoice in the Lord your God, for he has given you the autumn rains because he is faithful. He sends you abundant showers, both autumn and spring rains as before. The threshing floors will be filled with grain. The vats will overflow with the new wine and oil. I will repay you for the years the locusts have eaten, and the great locust, and the young locust, and the other locust, and the locust swarm, my great army that I will send among you. You will have plenty to eat until you are full, and you will praise the name of the Lord your God, who has worked wonders for you. Never again will my people be shamed. Then you will know that I am in Israel, and that I am the Lord your God, and there is no other. Never again will my people be shamed. So now we see divine justice. Whatever is taken must be returned in abundance. And not only does God leave a blessing, but he pours out his spirit. Joel 2:28. And afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even my servants, both men and women, will, I will pour out my spirit in those days. I will show wonders in the heavens and on earth blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. For on Mount Zion and in Jerusalem there will be deliverance, as the Lord has said, even among the survivors whom the Lord calls. So in case this sounds familiar, these are the verses Peter pulls from when he preaches on Pentecost. Why he pulls from the book of Joel when the next verses are about the great white throne judgment and the prior ones relate to a locust army, I have no idea. I mean, the only way he would have known what he was even understanding and how to connect this would have been um, illumination by the Holy Spirit. I mean... This is prophecy, in and out of timelines. Peter was led by the Spirit to find the verses that applied to this timeline. See, God isn't as linear or historic as we are. If you look at Luke 4 and Isaiah 61, you'll see how Jesus at Nazareth is actually preaching at Nazareth, and he reads from Isaiah 61, and he stops mid-sentence. It's not the scriptures are meant to be picked apart, it's just the overpowering perspective of an omniscient God above time and space. God speaks his vision from his heart and his perspective always calls his people, regardless of the human condition and our limitations of time. Next, the great white throne judgment with a mix of current judgment on the nation of Tyre and Sidon running in close parallel with Joel's prophecies. Joel 3, in those days and at that time, when I restore the fortunes of Judah and Jerusalem, I will gather all the nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. There I will put them on trial for what they did to my inheritance, my people Israel, because he scattered my people among the nations and divided up my land. They cast lots for my people and traded boys and they sold girls for wine to drink. Now what have you done against me? Tyre and Sidon and all you regions of Philistia. Are you repaying me for something I have done? If you're repaying me back, I will swiftly and speedily return on your own heads what you have done. For you have took my silver and my gold and carried off my finest treasures to your temples. You sold the people of Judah and Jerusalem to the Greeks. 
that you might send them far from their homeland. See, I'm going to rouse them out of the places to which you sold them, and I will return on your own heads what you have done. I will sell your sons and daughters to the people of Judah, and they will sell them to the Sabaeans, a nation far away. The Lord has spoken. Proclaim this among the nations. Prepare for war. Rouse the warriors. Let all the fighting men draw near and attack. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weaklings say, I am strong. Come quickly, all you nations from every side and assemble there. Bring down your warriors, Lord. Let the nations be roused and let them advance into the valley of Jehoshaphat. For there I will sit to judge all the nations on every side. Swing the sickle, for this harvest is ripe. Come, trample the grapes, for the winepress is full and the vats overflow. So great is their wickedness. Multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. For the day of the Lord is near in the valley of decision. The sun and moon will be darkened and the stars no longer shine. The Lord will roar from Zion and thunder from Jerusalem. The earth and the heavens will tremble. But the Lord will be a refuge for his people, a stronghold for the people of Israel. And the end of the age and blessings of victory. Joel 3:17. Then you will know that I, the Lord your God, dwell in Zion, my holy hill. Jerusalem will be holy. Never again will foreigners invade her. In that day the mountains will drip with new wine, and the hills will flow with milk. All the ravines of Judah will run with water. A fountain will flow out of the Lord's house and will water the valley of Acacias. But Egypt will be desolate, Edom a desert waste, because of violence done to the people of Judah, in whose land they shed innocent blood. Judah will be inhabited forever in Jerusalem through all generations. Shall I leave their innocent blood avenged? No, I will not. The Lord dwells in Zion. Thanks for joining us for this episode of Message to Kings. Feel free to visit the website, messagetokings.com. Share the Facebook page or if you want to chat, email us at messagetokings at gmail.com.